Yeah, commuters, of course, keeping a close eye on this nor'easter, barreling through the northeast in New England as it sets up a messy Tuesday morning commute. It could be a, a problem. So how exactly should drivers be prepared to navigate the weather? Well, when you're behind the wheel, commuter, right? Got to watch it. Yeah, and we're talking about big commuting cities, New yeah. York City, Boston, areas where people rely on the roads, rails, buses, everything in between. And someone that knows all about them, mm -hmm. car coaches Lauren Fix. She's joining us this evening. Lauren, good evening to you. I know it's a late night, the beginning of this nor'easter, but we do have yep. a serious storm that's going to take shape. Uh, motorists that might be caught in their vehicles, worst case scenario, how do you prepare if you're heading out, even if it's a short commute and you have to get out tomorrow into Wednesday, how do you prepare for this? Well, actually, I'm supposed to fly out tomorrow, and I was supposed to go through LaGuardia. That's already been canceled, so check your flights if you're flying out. I will tell you that we are already starting to receive snow here in western New York, and it's going to be pretty heavy. We've seen this before. Uh, number one, if you don't have to go out, don't leave your home. You don't want to take a risk. You saw what happened here in Buffalo during Christmas time. Well, that snow is returning, and it's because the lakes never froze over, we're picking up a ton of snow and lake effect. And what that means is the roads are going to get covered really quickly. So if you don't have snow tires, maybe your all-season tires are worn out, this is not the time to go out and investigate what you're talking about, because I know you're showing it. Stay home, watch Fox Weather. It's a safer place to be. But if you're going out, make sure you have all your essentials with you, because you could easily get stuck. Yeah, making sure you have that warm blanket and food and snacks. I want to ask, yes. too, you know, you have scenes like this where you have, you know, you can have big snow, low visibility, but you can also have maybe just a few inches. And sometimes that's when we see even more crashes. I, I'm not sure if it's because people go into it, maybe with their defenses a yeah. little down, but, you know, from low to big, yeah. crashes everywhere in between. Right. I think people forget they have to give themselves a lot of extra distance because you don't realize that the car in front of you or the vehicle in front of you is going much slower. They're thinking like you are. Okay, I'm not really sure I'm going to slow down. If you slow down too much, the person coming up from behind you doesn't expect you to be driving that much below the speed limit. And that's when you're seeing accidents, super slow drivers or people driving way faster than the conditions. And that usually is the speed limit or higher. This is not the time to do that. You really need to give yourself as much braking distance room and as much acceleration room because in order to avoid an accident, if you see yourself getting closer to a vehicle, start looking for escape routes. Open your vision, look as far ahead as you can because that escape route could save you from hitting another vehicle because you look where you go. And Lauren, when we deal with nor'easters, they are a bit unique, especially along the coast, because yeah. you've got that wind component, too. I mean, it's one thing to yeah. drive in the snow, but then you add mm -hmm. the wind dynamic. That could lead to some big problems on the roadways. So is it a bit different driving in a nor'easter compared to a snowstorm? And how would you adjust if you yeah. are having to hit the roads? Well, besides the distance, which is super critical, try not to use your high beam headlights at night. Use your low beams. If it's during the day, you're going to have a lot of whiteouts because you're going to pick up that strong wind that you've been talking about. A pair of polarized sunglasses is your best friend because you can actually see through some of the snow. You will never see clearly until it is clear. A good set of wiper blades, bring extra washer fluid with you. You ne definitely don't want to tailgate someone to get splash up on your windshield. So what you want to do is give your self-distance. And if you're really not comfortable with this, maybe you have never experienced a snowstorm. If you have a chance, find an empty parking lot with no telephone poles and hit the brakes, hit the gas, see how long it takes to gain traction. And that's why winter tires are super critical because they're super soft, like a snow boot. And it gives you that traction because the tread on the bottom of the, of the boot, just like your tire, will pack full of snow. And that snow on snow traction is the best. You don't think about it that way. You think, oh, well, I want something that grips the snow and claws at the snow. You really don't. The reason that snow tires are designed is to give you that best traction, handling, braking, under 40 degrees. And it is definitely under 40 degrees. I love the advice about finding a parking lot. Growing up in Michigan, that's how I learned yeah. how to drive in the snow. My dad said, all right, Me go, too. get scared, but be scared in more of a controlled environment yeah. because it's that fear yeah. also that makes you kind of overreact and that sort of thing. I do want to mm -hmm. ask you before we leave because yeah. I think one thing everyone needs to be reminded about, you're involved in a crash or maybe there's a crash up ahead and you're stuck in traffic, what to mm -hmm. do in an emergency because all too often we see folks get out and oh, that yeah. can present, right, a very dangerous, potential dangerous situation. Right. 
Well, I'm from Michigan as well. My father taught me the same thing that your dad taught you, so that's that's great advice. Uh, if you see an accident occurring in front of you, obviously you don't want to be a part of it. And if you're stuck in your vehicle or maybe you're part of a fender bender, the worst thing you can do is get out of your vehicle. What you should do, number one, is put on your four ways. Let everyone know around you that you've got a problem. And then what you want to do is stay in the car unless that car is on fire or it's smoking or there's really a serious problem and if you do have to get out of the vehicle you want to get on the other side of the barrier because even though it's not the best thing to do which is why you need to dress pro properly with boots and you know snow pants and everything honestly the best place to be is home but if you are involved in an accident call 911 let them know they may not be able to make it there right away but the least the best you can do is get the vehicle off the roadway if it's drivable but use those four ways and communicate with others they have to know because oftentimes they're distracted or focus on just the road and those conditions. Right. Well, watch as this storm moves on through. The car coaches, Lauren yeah. Fix, appreciate it. And hey, Michigan, parking lots, never knew. Yeah, look at that. Something that you guys <laughs> both share in common. Appreciate your time this evening. Yeah. Thank you.